All right, gang, let's do this thing. Episode 5, Space Engineers. I think today we will concentrate on targeting the weaknesses of this base. I know our power situation is a weakness right now. We still only have one turbine and one battery. I'd like to expand the battery bank and actually move them over onto this section of the grid before we commence the grinding on this side. Before we do that, since we're going, going to need a lot of iron to produce the batteries, I think I will put the new rotary style drill head on, which I think you'll find interesting. Since I have this groove already cut, I'm going to use this groove to my advantage. First I'm going to lay out the rotor head. And since also on uh, survival multiplayer servers, you're limited in the amount of welders and drills that you get, five per player, at least right now, the time of this video. So let's use our five as wisely as we can to get as wide as we can with a single rotation. So imagine this thing spinning in a circle. This drill here, when it spins in a circle, will cover this area. If So if I put another drill head there, it would be redundant. So I'm going to put a spacer in that spot. And on that, I can put another drill. And then this drill will spin circular, so I need a spacer on the opposing side. You see where I'm going with this. And my, the hole is not going to be quite wide enough for this, but I will fix that problem. In fact, I will weld up what we have here in this direction to address that issue right now. Clear this queue out and start over with it. There we go. Hopefully we have enough iron to get this done. As much as I've been saying it, we're not truly home free yet. This rotary drill will give us the type of numbers and yield that we want. Okay, I'm gonna need some steel plate. May have to grind some things to get there. Oh no! Refuse the hand drill. Ah. Disassembly, here we come. Okay, disassembled some resources to make plate. Get that going. Here comes the rain. Now, I won't have enough sideways room to place that next drill head, but I'm going to push this cylinder, this piston out this way, which will open up room for me to snap that additional piston on. And I think if I push it all the way out, I should have room to get all five on. We'll just have to see. Now as I push it out with the drill head on, 
it may try to rotate, so I might lock that advanced rotor. Let's, let's see how it plays out here. try without locking it first. I think the drill that I placed last has the highest number, so I think that would be number two. Let's see if I'm right. No. I ground that off so that one is number two. Alright, let's try this one. by lightning. It did, I see smoke. I didn't see the lightning strike, but it happened. Clear my build queue. Right click on the damaged piston. And we might see some more lightning. yellow. It needs to be green. Something is amiss. Okay. It's functional. Check that part again. Let me get something further. Ah, there it is. The head on that connecting piston is not complete. That wouldn't allow material to flow through. That would be a problem. Glad I caught that. Now we're green. Now try pushing that piston out. Over. Reverse that piston. Watch my crosshairs to see if this thing is moving. It is, it's very slow. Better spot to check is right here. It's not moving. Reverse again, in case it was going in the wrong direction. It is still not moving. off. Wrong direction. Reverse it twice. That should do it. Yes. Rotor head doesn't appear to be spinning. I think we're okay. Just about room to snap on another. We'll start welding. Check the build queue, it's clear.
Now if I add one more spacer and one more drill bit over here, that will complete my five drill rotary hit. And I think we're waiting on stone at this point. Yep, I may have to run these drills into the ground just to finish getting the stone that I need to weld that one. And I think after I weld that one, instead of doing the fifth, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it send it on a plunge and end this material shortage issue. So we'll turn on that piston set. It's building these iron ingots so slowly, I figured, because of this sandy top layer, it doesn't yield as much material as that solid stone. This down here is dense in terms of yielding iron, silicone, and nickel. This sandy layer, not so much. Okay, we're just about down. Let that finish all the way. This piston almost extended. And we'll raise it up, finish welding the last drill, and give this boy a whirl. And that was the sound to let me know the pin Pistons have been extended all the way. Okay. Quickly retract both. Down. 
group. And the up. Now make sure you set that back to avoid future accidents. Yet. Didn't wait long enough. when I begin spinning that. I don't want to break anything, so I'm going to have to go real slow. Slower than I generally would. I normally set my rotors at 3.75 RPMs. That means three, three and three quarter revolutions in, in a 60 second interval. I could probably still leave it at that RPM setting if I just set the torque low so it doesn't break off when it hammers into the side. I'm going to show you those settings right about now, after I turn this last one on. That drill on, advanced rotor, generally turn the torque down to somewhere in here, braking about halfway, velocity to my old trusted and tested 3.75. And it's beginning to bang, but it's not going to hurt anything as long as that torque is turned down reasonably far. It's going to make its way around. And after I get this circular cut made, I'm definitely going to have to tune these piston speeds down. Because then we're dealing with revolutions as well as plunge speed, and I can't probably can't go quite as fast as I have been. Patience is a virtue. And besides that, once the material starts flowing, it doesn't matter if it takes time. No problem. Run off and do something else. And it looks like I have a little orphaned remnant there, and I want to take care of that. I see two of them. I want to take care of that. If you end up with a floating rock like this in space and you run into it with your ship, it will destroy your ship as if it's a massive asteroid. These remnants won't be a problem once I finish this cut. Finish this circular, initial circular spin. Once it goes all the way around a few times, it's going to smooth this area out in here really good. So I select 3.75. A lot of people say, well, why don't you go faster? You need time, I'll call it hang time, over a certain area for the drill head to pick up the material. So if you, I've found that if you go too much faster than that, it impacts the efficiency and you'll need more revolution so 3.75 is a good compromise that seems to work and you can fine-tune how fast the pistons go downward once you find the right combination your drill rig is um, a nice finely tuned machine at that point let this go around a few more times yeah it looks like it's got it pretty well I'll start with the down single piston first, or up actually, as I name them in the direction the piston is pointed. That's going to be too fast. I'm going to set this to, I'll try it, now I'll try two, that's probably still too fast. Let's see.
looks okay. Can't really tell until we get down into the rock. This sandy layer is kind of funny. Not used to drilling in it. It's acting a bit different than stone or other ores. And since it's so low yield, I don't think I really care about it, so I'm going to turn on the piston group at the same time. If we end up wasting material because we're going too fast, not a problem. Got that on 2.5, that's interesting. Okay. Had to be on 2.5. Has to be on 2.5 because it's half of the other speed, so... Okay, let me fix that really quick. The up is on... 0 0.05, so I need the group on 0 0.025. Half. The banging tells me that I'm going too fast. It's okay. I'll turn one of these down as soon as I break through this sandy layer, which is going to happen pretty soon. Yeah, see, this is what happens when it's going much too fast. All right, that's about that's about there. We'll turn off the group. Let me take a revolution or two for it to smooth out. If it doesn't smooth out, then I'll make an adjustment to slow it down. don't like to see those sparks so I would say that this is still just a little bit too fast I suspect materials being wasted it may not be but I just don't like to see the sparks can make a slight adjustment Sparks. sticking out right there that I might hand drill off if it bangs it again. No, oh, it didn't. Must have been the wobble. Okay. I think we can let this go for a while and get into something else, which is probably our power situation. Our batteries probably need to be addressed. I think this refinery is chugging on stone pretty well. How much stone do we have waiting in the wings just yet? Probably not. Yeah, not too much, but that drill will we'll address that. So that means we have plenty of raw materials on the way. I like to sink batteries into the ground just to keep the base from getting bulky above ground. And I noticed, just for in terms of aesthetics without having to work for it, 
keeping PCU at a minimum. The battery block has a side on it that sort of looks like lights. Oops. We can take advantage of that and make sort of running lights on the ground. Okay, on the top of the battery, you see those two lights there? Why don't we just make sort of an ad hoc walkway leading towards the medical bay. Now, I have no idea how this base is going to turn out. That's half the fun. But the, the design will sort of take care of itself. The journey is the fun. Got that. There's four batteries. Now we've got a battery over there. I'm not going to grind that. What I will do is set it on discharge after I get at least one other battery built. And that way it won't take on any new current into it and it will use its stored current for normal base function until it drains and then I'll grind it. Okay, let's see, did I put batteries in? I did not. Let's load those in my queue. Right click with the mouse. Now, I'm going to need how many power cells per battery? I think 80, so 8 times 4, 320 of those, I know I'm going to need, might as well just get them going. Constructions, construction components, you know what I said about queue up another thousand, might as well start doing that always played. And I'll just move this queue around until I can get onesie twosies that I need to just get going. A couple of these, a couple of those. I should be able to grab some to get welding. Battery number two. And our walkway is not going to look that good with grass poking up through it, but that's okay. If I would have had the presence of mind, I would have made the base one block high or not sunk the blocks so deeply. But I was going by... So wherever you sink the initial block, the grid has to stay attached to stay as part of the same grid. If you go to the letter I, under Info, you see all of your individual grids. Now these are part of the drill rig. These are subgrids. But the big ones, the earth base, it shows how much PCU I'm using and how many blocks are connected to it. Now all of this, this half of the construction, all of the connecting links and everything over there, is under that one grid right now because it's all interconnected. If I would have started over here and placed a solo block by itself without having this connected first, it would have created a new grid under here, which I didn't want. And so I had to take the feature of the terrain and just once I got over here, whatever altitude I was at with the block is where I ended up. I wish I was a, a little bit higher with it so the grass wouldn't be poking up on my walkway, but we'll go with it. I'm not going to grind the batteries to do that. Again, we're pretending this is a survival server. Aesthetics or secondary. Should alleviate our power situation. We are struggling a bit with a single wind turbine. And there's a million different ways to do this. You'll find your own way, I'm sure. I don't mind taking the long way while I'm uh, creating a survival tutorial. You get to see the different ways things can unfold. And hopefully you're thinking about how you could have done it better. here 
banging around. I'm hearing banging. Just give a quick peek here. Those are okay. There they go. Battery number four. Okay, charge up since I'm standing here. I think maybe the next thing we should take a look at is upgrading our tools so we can weld, grind, and drill a little bit faster with the hand tool. So if we go to our G menu, over here we can select character tools. And the ones that are highlighted are the ones that I have. Now you can drag things down onto your toolbar. Since I don't have any of those in inventory, I can't drag those onto the toolbar. But we mouse over, no, not from here, but if you go to the assembler, come on, assembler, our production of the assembler, here, under tools, it looks like I already have the materials to make. This is what I have as the default. This is the next step up. I can already make all the way into here. I'm gonna need platinum to make the next level beyond that. One of those, one of those, one of those. Guess I should have done this a while ago. That's okay. Yeah, silver and cobalt opens those up. So cobalt opens up level two, cobalt plus silver is three, and then the final level is platinum. And that is going to be asteroids. That is a ways off. There is our third tool completing. I'll spend just a quick second talking about inventory and inventory sorting. Right now, since this icon is selected, it's only showing me the bin that I'm looking into. This will show all connected inventories. Now here's where it gets interesting. You're just looking at everything because this one is selected. If you select this one, it will show you just this ship or grid. I like this one. When I'm trying to find things very quickly, this shows just storage containers. And you can further compound your search by adding another field to it. So if I wanted to look for just ingots and storage containers everywhere on the base, I would see. Now this is not really a good representation of all the ingots that I have because I'm only looking at storage containers that have ingots in them, not even empty ones. So I would probably go back to show everything with just ing and maybe even hide empty to make the list shorter. And now I'm seeing that I have 11,000 kilograms of iron, which is a pretty good start. I'd like to see 100,000 in there, and I will soon enough. But that's just a really quick look at setting up complex sorting. And you'll get good at this with a little bit of practice. You'll figure out how to find missing items. And if you're connected to a large base, this sort of, this hide empty checkbox is going to be your friend pretty quickly. OK, 
Okay, back to adding tools to our toolbar. G menu. Character tools. I didn't pick up my drills yet. I need to do that. There they are. Drag them into the inventory. And I will take my... Since every little bit of little bit counts, I'm going to take my old tools and I'm going to put them into the assembler and disassemble them, just for a couple of parts. What the heck. Okay, now that they're in my personal inventory, back to the G menu, now they're highlighted. Now I can drag them onto the bar. and begin using my upgraded tools. Now if you die, you will lose those next level tools and you'll go back to the newbie tools, but your bar will stay updated with the upgraded tools, which can be a pain if you die a lot. Uh, you'll probably experience that and what it means to constantly have to readjust your tools. Line up. tools done, I think maybe we should start looking at adding expandable modules onto this refinery. Now, if we type MOD to show all the modules, we have some choices here. The plus sign shows that there's more than one option. Okay, so we've got speed module, yield, which is going to give us more, and power. Not all the upgrade modules can fit onto the assembler and the refinery. On the assembler you can only install power and speed. You can't get extra materials out of thin air with the assembler using yield, but you can refine your raw material in a more efficient way using your mo yield module so you can put this on the refinery and actually I think this is the best bang for the buck since especially if you're drilling valuable material like gold or more rare material. Yield is really where it's at. So I strive to go to that direction first. Only extenuating circumstances would make me slap on a power module. Sometimes speed, actually one speed module and three yield is a pretty good configuration because when you use speed module you get a huge boost with just one on there. But as I said I'm going to go straight for yield. So I'm going to put I'll just, hey, you know what, I'll just put one in there just to get going. And we hover over it, we see we need 20 superconductors. Superconductors require gold. Look at our assembler. Cue one of those up. We need gold ingots for that. I have a gold GPS location. I don't have it displayed right now, but I can quickly find it. There is this drill spot, so that is showing. Put it on always visible. Check my bottles to make sure that I have enough fuel to get there and back without a problem. I'm carrying See, I should fill those up. Do I have enough ice in my generator? I do. Good, good, good. To carry two bottles. I'm giving away a little bit of cargo space carrying that extra bottle, but I just find that I... I like having to fill those bottles a little bit less. So where is my gold? It's in that direction. Over there. Fly out here. Crouch, hold the F key. It looks like I picked up a fair amount of stone, so I'm going to want to drop that and make sure I'm carrying nothing but gold on my way back. Inventory. 
inventory full. Check one last time. It looks like I've got a little bit more. Inventory full. How about that? Yeah. Just gold. Now I'm not going to do too much hand drilling for this gold until I get ideally get these yield modules snapped on. I could, but I would waste a little. Now the assembler should be producing. Superconductors as that gold becomes available to it. Tell you what, I know I'm going to need more gold, so I'm just going to get after that. Go in the wrong direction. I tried to miss that pesky stone, but I think I got some anyway. Pretty close. Good enough. Place that yield module yet. So make sure these ports are lined up so it has two small ports on the one side. Now you can stick these any old way that you can get it across two of those ports, it doesn't really matter. There is five. Almost. Need a few more plates or small tubes. Oh, and I guess I need motors as well. If I'm running low on those. Getting now we're getting more efficiency. Let's take a look at that. Control panel, refinery. Just about 120%, so we're getting 19% extra material. As we add more, that number will go up. Let's do that. Let's max this thing all the way. Sixty more. Of these.
hopefully I should make it by the time this gold has been refined. I will have enough superconductors completed to weld the last yield module and then our refinery is set up. Then maybe we can pop a few speed modules onto the assembler. I don't like to wait. My choices with the assembler are again power or speed. I like speed. And with speed you get a little bit of power savings because you complete your task quick. So I think it's the better choice overall. Your opinion may differ, the situation may differ. If you're on solar panels, you definitely will probably choose power efficiency. And we're sort of walking a fine line with this wind turbine anyway. This is a very minimalistic approach. And normally, if I was in a spot to where I wasn't worried so much about how things looked from above, I would build many more wind turbines. And I could have also built built this up in a tree and I probably still will I can tuck two or three of them in these trees and that would be a lot more discreet how is our drill hole looking pretty good still coming down a little bit almost all the way Just touch more and it'll be finished out so yeah so this drill hole is going this drill rig is going to need adjustment pretty soon before we can do another good plunge i'll have to grind the entire thing and make another adjustment either put another piston on here or more likely if i'm going to dr grind the entire drill rig i'll probably continue grinding all of this back and rebuild the drill rig so i can run it from this part of the grid and then it maybe extend it out this way to continue our giant hole and then I could match the paint color a little bit better to the grass and put over some cheap steel plate to cover this hole. Keeping with our stealth theme. Let's pop those speed modules onto the assembler. G menu. Speed. What do we need to build those? Nothing real special. Run of the mill. this side Bill cube it was probably okay as it was but I've gotten into a habit of flushing it and restarting just overall it seems to save trips because I'm always Mixing something up along the way. Computers. And there we go. Let's take a last look at our battery power situation. Three hours, okay. Now this is going to catch up. I think now I will set this particular battery to discharge instead of auto. So its charge naturally flows over into the other batteries. You see this number dropped from four hours to three. And because my assembler is running, it's still drawing wattage. So if I just clear this out just to settle everything down in the base. Now let's take a look at the refinery to make sure it's done. It's not doing anything. No power draw there. Now let's take a look. Now we're back in a positive start charge state. Which is where we want to be before we log off, certainly. <clears throat> okay, I think that is going to do it. Yeah, let's take a look. Oh my. 